these are called the Hadak Towers. Yeah. Here we have them as a memorial. Yes. And they were the first building that was built here. Yeah. So for years, people identified the city of Kotor by the Hadak Towers. I think that they are hold by, the, by an exhibition uh, that is now taking place here. But let's walk in the, into okay. the museum. Oh, I, what I missed before, you, that urban configuration, uh, how, how the streets uh, face buildings in Santiago, and then you entered uh, into the buildings mm -hmm. through these covered sidewalks, mm -hmm. and how these these buildings are functioning along these streets mm -hmm. that are pedestrian, and how the spaces inside the buildings mm -hmm. that are in connection with the streets have uses that uh, let them have uh, an urban life out op opening hours, mm -hmm. like the one that we've been before. I was in that canteen that's mm -hmm. facing, facing the street. Right. No matter if the building is closed, right. you can have urban life around. Right. It's it's like getting that city urban configuration to go in buildings, how buildings are shaped and organized. So in all buildings that we go, <coughs> you enter in this like orthogonal, in opposition to what is the main space, public space. There you go. Let us walk through this okay. museum. Give you an example there of how what is that flexibility of the buildings. From here, where we are, you can see where we were a while ago. So this is the whole temporary exhibition gallery around what is the main use of the building, which is the gallery envelope. And then you can read how some soft materials meet what is the basic skeleton of the building. What is ruling over which other part? So in any corner of these buildings, you find all these references of how, what is the organization of the elements of the design. And the public that is using them doesn't have to have this yeah reading, but they are, they find themselves immersed in a universe of references mm -hmm. that are around. So what goes in this area? Okay, this area there, uh, here, originally ended up in what was the outside, the, the last door to the covered sidewalk there. But then, in one of these changes, the architects were asked to enlarge the exhibition areas. So what we have to do was to bring backwards what is a mechanical plant, which are several in each building. The buildings are so huge. And then also, well, as an explanation in connection with those, the, the organization of traffic here. As I told you that the complex is a pedestrian complex. That is a, from that almost 700,000 square meters site you get over 150,000 square meters of pedestrian areas. And then the buildings occupy another 65,000 square meters in plan. But the general program of buildings now, in the actual state of the project, is over 154,000 square, square meters. So what do you need to have all these different traffics together with the normal functioning of buildings. We have this huge underground tunnel that ties the buildings to, uh, together, mm -hmm. gives road access to all buildings, and also uh, come from two main power central, uh, central power areas, mm -hmm. which is the heating one or the cooling one. So all the mechanicals drive to buildings along that tunnel, and they're very easily maintained. So all these huge areas uh, that answer to those engineered world uh, needs right. are hiding in what is this interlapping enveloped space in between what is the internal form of the buildings and the general outside mountain range level of the design. Now, this area that you ask what is it being used for it's been holding like television shows, concerts, uh, public events from the government, 
it's even hired from companies to have these their presentations around here. So it's got a lot of use now. Sure. <laughs> but the buildings have been used in many different ways, uh, apart from what were what was their main use. Sure. You want us to climb down there? I like very much this view sure. of the of this connection along the buildings. Let's climb down the, the escalators are not working in that in this area. Uh, go go ahead. I have to go close that way. The way people getting in here. There you are. So in fact this building is a huge whale. It's over, it's over 135 meters long. But the, it doesn't look so big from the exterior. No, but the inside, the inside is, huge. is huge. So now this is the full length of that space. So north from the main news mm -hmm. and the escalators that are the main public circulation up hill or down the hill. You have this long space where you have the three patterns here, like the urban one, that's the one that is uh, uh, giving form to the facade, and then the internal one, together with this structural organization. In the last uh, reading, you have this always, this metal, metal inserts along, these deformation bands that are the ones that uh, to which the internal organization of spaces right. relates to. It's the same as we use for a terrazzo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in fact, you have all this uh, paved with these uh, square tiles of marble, right. but it could have been a uniform terrazzo. Yeah. That was one thing that uh, Moneo, Rafael Moneo said the first in his first visit, I said, we would like this very much, much more in areas like the Ratha ones. Yeah. Okay, we can. Yeah. Let us do one thing, let us climb to the upper one, and how it opens up, separated from what they want to go first, to have it free of urban. So what is it, it speeds up when you get on it? Sorry? It speeds up when you get on it? Yep. Yeah. It's right. saving energy. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's more costly if they stop and right. start up. Right. So they just slow down right. but that's to a right. minimum and that's then great. they just speed up when they have people on top of them. I don't think I've ever been on one that did that. I think it's an average uh, Thyssenkrupp German yeah. kind of German right. piece of the industrial design. Right. They work beautifully. Sure. In fact, they have to be set in place before the building was built. That was so funny. You have to like, get the escalators in the building before as the structure was being built. So the escalators laid here for five years, <laughs> wrapped up in plastic. Oh boy. There we go. I guess everybody knows you on this site, on this building. Yeah, everybody knows me. Hold on. You're here all the time. I'm not here all the time. I just well, came on Sunday because of you. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I've been here. I've been here. I've been here. I've been here. I'm going for so many years. So many years. Yes. yes. Yes, I'm the only archaeological remain that is still <laughs> outside. Okay, look at look at it from here. Oh, it's the only place where you can see the cathedral yes. and old Santiago from inside the buildings. That's why I wanted you to I wanted to bring you up here. Yeah, well, the cathedral is now wrapped up in that scaffolding. Yes, but they can see it. I'm zooming in on it. You know that for centuries, no building could be higher than the cathedral in Santiago. Yeah, well, this one isn't higher. It's on a hill that's higher. Well, if you look at the other towers of right. the monasteries around, yeah. they are just about the same height, but no, right. one, no one 
right. goes over. And that was the first stone. So that's the original mountain shape that right. is kept down there. See that, that granite yes, slab? Yes. That was the first stone of the works. Then you go back to the 3D model. You see that form that I yes. uh, pointed at before, coming, crossing, yes. and then forming this big hole down there, wrapping these three levels exhibition area. But it's just a single form that crosses sure. down outside to the covered sidewalk. Yes. That is a part of this internal volume when it comes to be a street. Some years ago, I was explaining this project to a bunch of school kids. So as I, 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 well, it happened to think about an apple. So imagine that you have to, just with a, with a pen, draft an old plan of a town over an apple. Yeah. And then when you have it, well, the apple is, has its own form. Right. And then you decide to carve the streets right. out from that plan. And then you get your knife carve the streets out of an apple and then the streets look like white or yellow and they're still an apple That's good. but there's their streets okay. so and then when you carve in the streets inside the apple there is a, a hole that was there and you discover it when you cut with a knife and everything is an apple sure. and you're, you're drafting a plan that is not a plan it's like a series of spaces that get more and more complex as you are you as you go driving transformations into it. This is beautiful. The space is beautiful. Yes. And this exhibition is also meant to be seen from sure. here. So the sweet water, then you have that big furniture piece that is the rivers. You can see it from here. And also from here, you have a clear reading of those grids patterns that I told you. See the main grid, where the main columns are, the secondary grid, yes. this is where this columns and pilasters against the internal volume are placed and then you see the forms that are deforming that soffit the other ones that are going north to south along those metal inserts in the pavement and from here you see also taking the Aztec mm -hmm. rain god that is there <laughs> you see how even the parking lots there are organized along those patterns. Right. You can see, you can see there the medieval grid mm -hmm. of roads, how it goes in the plaza there. So the red, like brick color streets are the pedestrian caminos, mm -hmm. and then the medieval pattern of the old plan, and then the light gray of that tartan grid. And under it, the dark stone of the 16 by 20 meter grid. And then the rain gutters that follow that 8 meter grid. So you can read parts of the idea all through roofs, urbanized areas, streets, central valley. And then within buildings happen these things, like these mullions encountering there in what is an impossible corner. <laughs> and it's not a window, but it's, you cannot explain it as part of a system that is being right. driving through the buildings. And right. then they encounter a different part of the building. So all this detailing is impossible right. to be built, to be thought, thought of even without this clear order of theory. Well, it's not theory, it's like uh, the project own language. Right. And then you have a grammar, and then you make sentences out of a grammar. So if the rules are clear, the sentences make, make sense. And you can explain the whole book from the grammar rules. Again, my own words. <laughs> Sorry. I don't that is the no. column that I pointed before. Yeah. That is around 40 meters tall. This huge column is just holding the big beam that is like an arch, like a bridge that is resting on top of the columns 
just passing vertical loads onto the columns. And here, it looks slim. It's a huge thing. And it's holding this form that is the outside form. Uh, how the actual structure goes back, re, uh, looks for relatives in that first grammar of the 20 by 16 meters span of beams. So in the final execution documents, the Spanish team went back to what were the first sketches of detailing that were in the first proposal by Asimon Architects and their consultants at the moment. Uh, how you reach the soft form of the soffit and the channels of the deformation bands mm -hmm. and the flow lines that go along them from the actual construction. So if you remember the place that I showed you before, how the form went down to the last level mm -hmm. crossing, there is that channel there. So in that well, that form there, there way there. way down there, looking that direction, is where we were a while ago. And from here, look at that. It goes down some 30 meters down there, crossing with all these series of passageways, catwalks, mm -hmm. stairways to get the maintenance people over all this skiing. And this happens not so wide all along buildings. So you have the actual skins, the internal soffit layer, and the external roofing structural system, system uh, getting this usable up to a point spaces. So as a part of the flexibility of the final decisions of in construction come also parts of the flexibility of uses, of the flexibility of changes that have been happening all over this some 14 years. So how often does Peter come up here? Up to this place. Up, up, to up here. <laughs> up here in the last year and a half, I think. Has been he here. has been up here, but he has been up in this, on this catwalk. No, no, I don't, I don't think he's been in this catwalk. That's what I'm wondering. No, no. Go ahead. Okay, this is the library reading room. In the same position in the organization of buildings as the museum temporary exhibition hall that they drove, I drove you through. So you see here, different levels of the reading room. Now, this upper level is completely dedicated to public workers. It's not accessible by the public anymore. And the lower level there, that was uh, meant to be researchers area, is also kept for parts of the library's organization in Galicia. But for me, it was quite a surprise to go across this reading room and to perceive how these general features of shaping and organizing the interior of buildings has got their reading in the actual usable spaces. Here, you can still see all these references that over and over again run through the buildings. Uh, how they go even arranging the furniture that is part of the architecture here. As in the museum, we walked in under the main exhibition areas. Here in the library, visitors go in and find themselves going around a gallery for books. Books are actually seen inside the storage area. But also the visitor can see how the books go in 
the soffit. So telling that the full volume that is over the visitors is to keep books. So that's the main storage area for books. It was meant to be originally for a million volumes. Okay, let's climb down. This reading room area says that they are very much user scale. Mm -hmm. And you lose sight of this huge space once that you are wrapped with all these bookshelves around. Mm -hmm. The library is actually is a, in a library that has been used by students, general public, but also is the head of the library system for wow. the country. See how the shelving goes also following these patterns. So the actual shelves and mullions are organized right. around this 8 meter grid that goes climbing and crossing horizontally, shaping the bookshelves that are not, and are not built also as pieces of furniture, but as parts of the architecture. Right, right, I see. Those were the original sofas that were signed by Asimov Architects for the first building for what was then the newspaper library, mm -hmm. and not anymore. It must be hard to try to get this it is. scale, it is. space, readings. Okay. Yeah, let's climb this way. Hola, estamos saliendo ya. Está ya en el parking. Bueno, pues nada, medio minuto estamos ahí. Ya estará. Okay, while we're here. Yeah, he's there. I'm going to show you. 